Hey guys. So today we're going to be going over how to conceptualize risk in Path of Exile. And we're going to be answering the question probably a lot of you guys have had, and a question that every single risk averse player has at least felt at some point or other. And the question is, how many repetitions will I have to make until I can be very confident that I will have hit my desired outcome at least once? Now, Path of Exile down it to its nuts and bolts is essentially nothing more than a glorified slot machine. And it's going to be throwing at us all these different probabilities and odds, but they can all be solved with the same formula. And if you can solve these problems, it will help you conceptualize the game in a new way. So we're going to be going over the math behind this equation that basically works for literally everything that Path of Exile will throw at us. And it's right here. Um, there's three inputs. There's P. Your P is the odds of failing the RNG roll in question. So it's the odds of getting the bad outcome. And then N is what we're trying to solve for. It's the number of repetitions we need to repeat in order to be very very confident that we will succeed in whatever this uh, scenario is at least one time we'll succeed at least once and CI is the confidence interval um, generally 95 percent confidence interval is pretty standard in statistics so we're just plugging in 0 0.05 there like that's just a fixed number um, technically, if you're extremely risk averse, you could use a 99% confidence interval and then you would change this to 0 0.01. But I wouldn't do that. I would just stick with what's standard. Uh, 95 confidence interval is still very, very confident. So I could go into explaining this conceptually, but I don't think most of you guys would want to hear that. So I'm just going to go straight into examples. I might make like a, another video explaining this, but then again, I'm not even like, I didn't even study math. Uh, I studied business. This is like, I remember this in high school. I, I failed this course, but like, as I've grown older, I've gotten more interest in this, especially because of the path of exile. So I understand this now, but like, you don't really have to like, let's just get into examples, get the ball rolling so you guys can see this. Uh, equation in action. So the first example you guys will be familiar with if you're playing Toxic Rain or Tornado Shot uh, Corrupting Fever, which were the two biggest league starters this league. So that's why we're going to go with this example to lead things off. And it is the first step towards the metacrafted bow we all made. So what we had to do was um, alt spam for a specific mod. Maybe it was chaos.multi or attack speed or whatever. And then you needed to regal it and then annul it back down to only the one mod. And if you're unlucky in the alt spam, you're going to have two mods. And then when you regal, you have three. So our chances of annulling both and succeeding are 1 out of 3 in this scenario, so the failure chance is 2 out of 3. So now let's see how many times will we have to repeat this process until we can be very confident that we will hit the desired outcome of isolating the alt span mod we want by itself. So let's pull up the Windows calculator. It starts in standard mode, but you need to set it to scientific for this. So the first part, we take the log of 0 0.05. So to do that, you do 0 0.05, then you press the log button. And now we want to divide it by the bottom. So we divide it by, now what is P? Bracket, 2 thirds. Close the bracket, log. So that's our equation. The way we type that, that's how you get log of 0 0.05 divided by log of 2 thirds. 
Now what does this give us? 7.38. Now you need to ra round this up to a whole number because you can't you can't roll a fraction, right? Like like you can't do a fraction of of repetition. So it's eight. So once you do this eight times, you can be extremely confident one of those eight times will have resulted in a success. It doesn't mean the eighth time, like on average, it will be the third time, or it will, um, yeah, I don't know about that, but not on average will be the third time, but on average, it will be one of the first three times, but it will be very, uh, very unlikely to take more than eight tries. So that's what we can get from this, which isn't so obvious. Like, would you know in your head it it would take up to eight tries? Like, it will very almost never take nine tries, but it can take up to eight tries. Like, this isn't so self-evident as just the average, which is why I think this formula is very, very insightful, especially if you're risk averse. If you're, yeah, which you should be. You should be somewhat risk averse. All right, let's go to the next scenario. This is a scenario that can be relatable to literally everybody who plays the game, which is getting a six link with fusings. Well, the question is, how many fusings will we have to hit before we get at least one six link? So we can assume the odds are about one in 1,000 for getting a six link. So we need to calculate P, which is the chance of failure. So that would be 999 times out of 1,000 we fail. So let's pull up the calculator again. Take the 0 0.05 log divided by bracket 999 out of 1,000. Close bracket, log. Now press the equal sign. The answer is 2,994. So what did this mean? N needs to be greater than 2,994. This means if you're rolling for a six link, it is extremely unlikely that you will not hit at least one after spending 2,994. Now, maybe you don't feel so bad when you've spammed well over a thousand and you still haven't hit it actually probably you, you still feel bad but this means it can take up to 2994 fusings until you get your first six link like we've all hit fuse we've all hit six links way faster than 1000 but if you're really unlucky you can get up this high what this also means is it will almost never take more than this many fusings to hit your first six link so there you go there's some insight on rolling six links. So if you're really risk averse, maybe that 1,500 benchcraft makes sense, even though on average, it only takes one in 1,000. Because if you're very unlucky, it could take close to 2,994. It could take up to 2,994. So we've applied this to six links. Now let's apply it to something else. Now this one I calculated specifically for me because I was running lab to try and get the implicit enemies withered by you have minus six all resistances on my headhunter and I wasn't getting it. It took me like 16 lab runs to get it and the odds are one in 16 but the thing was I was using twice enchanted so I like I think I used the font the blessing font or whatever it's called like 32 times before I got the the withered so I wanted to see like was I getting close to like the crazy amount that like is the threshold? So let's let's uh actually let's go over the math first. So failure would be um there's fifteen there's fifteen outcomes, they're all equal weighting. So your first blessing that you use, there's a fourteen out of fifteen chance that it doesn't hit the one you want. And if that fails then there's a 14 out of 15 chance that your second one fails. So failure happens when both of them fail. So we multiply them together. If 
that's how we calculate our failure rate. So P is 196 divided by 224. Let's plug that in. 0 0.05 log divided by bracket 196 out of 225 log. So 21.7, round that up to 22. So it only took me 16 tries, only took, but realistically it could take you up to 22 tries. Very rarely would it take 23 tries, but you could go up to 22 tries without getting the thing you wanted. So uh, as bad as it felt that it took me so many tries, I, like it could have taken me more and it still would have uh, been statistically uh, very believable. All right. Now on to the last example we're going to do, and also the most complicated one. This will be interesting for all you SSF players who need to corrupt your own corrupting blood jewel. So to do this, we need to, to uh, first there's the chance of failing to get any implicit on the vol orb which is three quarters of the time. Only one quarter of the time do you get the outcome where you get a vol implicit. So that's the first part of it, but it gets a little bit more complicated because even if you get a vol implicit, you still need to hit corrupting blood. And there are 21 different outcomes and they all have equal weighting. So your chance of success, even if, or sorry, you, you always measure in chances of, fa of failure. So your chance of failure, even if you uh, fail the first one, would be 20 out of 21. So the total chance of failure would be um, you don't get the corrupted implicit on the first one. And you also, even if you pass this, which is one quarter of the time, you will still fail it 20 out of 21 times. So three quarters of the time you just instantly fail because you don't get the implicit. And then one quarter of the time when you do get an implicit, it still fails 20 out of 21 times. Now <laughs> This starts to sound kind of confusing, right? But like this is showing you how you can even use like a somewhat like two-step uh, RNG and you can still plug it into this equation and you can still get an answer. So when you just uh, consolidate this out it ends up being your chance of failure is 83 out of 84 times. So what this means is on average when you slam 84 times you will hit uh, corrupting plug once. But let's calculate the uh, confidence to, to be very confident that that will hit it at least once. So 0 0.05 log divided by bracket 83 out of 84 log. That's 250.1. That means if you want to have a very high likelihood of at least getting one corrupting blood jewel, you might need to spend at most 250 vol orbs. So that's the insight from this. All right, now let's go on to the conclusions because I'm not going to do just infinite number of examples. So what are the conclusions? You should be using this formula to gauge risk when you need to be very certain that you will get the RNG outcome you require. So when you're very risk averse, this kind of gives you a little bit of a, like a cushion where it's like, if, if you do this much investment, you are almost definitely likely to succeed. Like still, the average probabilities of success are always going to be much better than the, uh, the N that we're getting from these equations. But this N is just sort of like a safety net where if you invest this much, you will almost 95% of the time you will succeed.
that's the insight you should get from this. Now, if you enjoy this content, uh, please subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.